Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. So our next speaker is uh, Gustavo uh, uh, Banagas. Uh, he possesses a distinguished academic background, uh, having earned a PhD in computer science and mathematics with a specialization in post-quantum cryptography from Eindhoven University of Technology. Over the past decade, he has diligently dedicated himself to the field of cryptography, focusing particularly on its practical implementation. In recent years, Gustavo's expertise has extended to isogenies and the development of hardware implementations for algorithms such as Kyber, the Lithium, and Falcon. Today, Gustavo holds a senior position as a cryptography engineer at Qualcomm, where he continues to leverage his deep knowledge and practical experience to drive innovation and to secure the landscape. The floor is yours. Ooh. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, so I'm happy that uh, Jope explained some stuff before. Um, <clears throat> we also are in the constrained environment, but uh, of course we have a little bit more uh, leverage because we have a cell phone. So I'm going to show a little bit of the challenge um, from the hardware perspective um, <clears throat> in the mobile ecosystems. Um, this also was like by me and a colleague, which is Florian. Um, <clears throat> so the outline, uh, yeah, I will present a little bit of like the introduction, what it's, it's this, uh, where you are thinking to apply, the system ship basics, the implication in the architecture, the solution that we're exploring, and kind of like a conclusion uh, that I will try to not be so pessimistic. Um, um, so, well, as you know, uh, Qualcomm is known because we are like uh, on the um, like more uh, cell phone side, but um, <clears throat> we also have like this connection between several um, devices. We have a wide range of uh, um, like microchips running. It's not only this uh, cell phone. Uh, we are really famous for this, but we also have like uh, other applications. Um, on the like communication. Um, so this is a little bit like more um, the, uh, I would say not market side, but a little bit more like this idea of like how wild uh, the 5G or this connection is going to be. We have several applications. We have um, in different um, aspects of the, let's say, society. We know that in the future, everything's going to be connected. A lot of stuff is already. Um, so, of course, we needed security on this, and, well, this is where we are going. Um, and as I said, we have this system on ship, which is, like, not only uh, on the cell phone, we are really famous for the Samsung cell phone. You can see, if you use one, probably use one of our processors. But we also go into the computer side now, automotive, IoT, so we have all these connections. Um, we have, we are here because, well, we all know that there is this quantum computer coming, or, okay. Um, we have this quantum computer coming, and we have seen yesterday, like, governments also taking action to do, like, this transition. Um, we had this in academia for some, some time now, and uh, it's, this also like um, pushes as an industry to move on in certain ways. Um, we have this kind of like consensus or like um, idea that uh, we should like deploy some stuff uh, until 2030 because it's where it should be like more vulnerable after this date. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we are taking this uh, transition. Um, well, this is really like a bad for the chip market because we had this, um, unfortunately, as uh, Job said, like uh, in the end of his talk, it's like you cannot like only change some stuff. Um, 
depends on where the, the chip is. Uh, we, for example, cannot just bring like some satellite back and like, hey, now we ch change this, no. Uh, but for cars or some other thing, you can do the update, but still it's not hardware, it is a software update. So there is some impact on this. Um, so we are going to highlight this challenge here and address what you are doing it. Um, it's important to see that we also have like these um, chips or you have these products that the lifespan might be bigger. And if you have now like some solution, we also needed to think this is not going to be like in two, three years, the lifespan of this product, sometimes it's 10, 15 years. So we also needed to deploy some stuff now that it's able to deal with uh, future updates. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of the system on ship. Uh, we have this um, trust management in engine, TME, which is high privilege. When I say this in a chip, it means it can stop the entire processor uh, and run their own stuff. Um, <clears throat> we have this root of trust, which is like a part of the chip that should not leak any um, key. So usually it's where the high privilege and privilege uh, operations of security works. So this is like the keys are there, so they should not leak. They uh, should be like secure environment. Um, when we have this app CPU, it's where the general CPU is running, also GPUs, all this part that it doesn't require security. Um, like for example, for some crypto, it's running there when it's not like really critical, the security. And then we have the other modes that are like um, more like general application. Uh, if you really see this more detail, we have this. So we have like most of the biggest um, part of the processor running in these apps. This is where, for example, the Android runs. And we have these hardware crypto accelerators. For example, the current ones are already like uh, ECC or RSA or AES. And they are like really in a secure mode because we should not leak keys, we should not leak any information when we have this. Um, <clears throat> so now this is where like we also in the constraint part because we see like all this, oh, we have like eight cores or like big amount of uh, power. Um, unfortunately, when you're doing this in the security part, we don't have this. When we are in the hardware script accelerator, in fact, it's really or uh, hardware specific for this crypto. O, for example, is the same case. It's like a Cortex M3, Cortex M0. Depends on what you're doing. And the reason is that, well, everyone prefers to play on the phone instead of having security. Um, so that's why we have like a lot of GPUs uh, on the phone. Um, this is like a little bit how it's now. So this is uh, not exactly post-quantum. You can see that they didn't say anything about post-quantum yet, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is more like um, the crypto accelerators, it's um, implementation dependent. Uh, it's like offload from the main CPU. It's like, okay, so the CPU can do other things while this is doing this secure part. But also remember that we can stop the entire processing because we just want to run one thing. Um, <clears throat> and the agility is um, limited because, well, it's a chip. So we cannot just like bring your, like recall the phones and say, hey, now we are just going to chip and remove and put a new one. So yeah, you needed to buy a new one for this, which is good for business. So just, just buy. <laughs> um, and well, we have like now the PKC standards, which is like uh, from Lattice, we have Kyber, Delifium and Falcon. From Hash, we have Sphinx. Uh, we have like new round, which is going to be um, like soon 
we have a candidate from this, like a winner, uh, which is like from Codebase, which is classic, bike, and HQC. And you also have the new call for signatures that happened this year. And um, <clears throat> the, it's quite nice to have like this diversity uh, in terms of like, hey, yeah, if someone is, one is broken or something bad happened, we have like a, um, something as a backup. But from the hardware point of view, I would say, no, <laughs> this is not nice, which means we needed to put more hardware. We needed to put m like bigger um, size of um, area, which is costly, which is demands more power from the cell phone, which is like drain your battery more, which is like no one wants to like every hour like charge your phone again. So this is something that we needed to take care. Um, and this is exactly like a graph for us. We have like, we are a little bit over the, um, this, we are like in the end. And um, for us, it's like really a short period of time because, well, if you needed to, for example, deploy in middle of like 2024 or like 2025, this means we needed to start designing some stuff years ago, which didn't happen. Um, so soon we are going to have this um, <clears throat> standards definition, but we are already like looking some things to do, how to do this. And yesterday we have this um, thing of like crypto agility and the agility uh, on the development. For us, this is not exactly a point, uh, our option, it's a requirement because as we, as I said before, um, we like cannot just change the chip. So we needed to have a solution that speed ups in this coprocessor or something that um, take care of like the next uh, upcoming um, um, crypto. Um, and well, this is now one of the problems because we have public keys that are bigger. We have like more RAM requirements and we have might end up doing this hybrid mode, which means, okay, we already have this coprocessor, this hardware there that it's for ECC or RSA. We still needed to maintain this and add something more. So this is going to be like more area in the chip, more um, operations happening. This is going to be like more costly. When I say costly, it's just not money costly. I also say like, this demands more power, this demands more um, transistor, this demands a lot of things in the chip that makes harder to um, put in like small devices. Um, yeah. So like near now we have like the good side, I would say. So this is like, okay, we have the agility, it's mandatory for PQC, so we need a CPU. We need a ded dedicated CPU and architecture. Um, yesterday, in the end of the day, there was a talk here that uh, it was saying like, hey, if you have like RSA and um, the signature, we have like all the same arithmetic. So it's like quite easy to have a more shaped uh, CPU. Um, we have several families and this is why I said, hey, it's nice if you have like the diversity on Pox Quantum, but the problem is this diversity also, it's a problem in the chip because, okay, Kyber and the Lithium, they share some arithmetic, some common ground, I would say. So it's easy to, okay, we can put this as a one thing in the chip, but then we go to Falcon, which is floating point. Okay, now we needed to put this. Um, if you want to put hash, okay, hash functions, it's okay. We can also put in the chip. Now we are have like also code base. Okay, does it share some common operations with Lattice? No, so now we need to have a different one. And this means like more coprocessors, more um, area in the chip, more work, more demand of power. This is really getting uh, scaling. So 
we also need uh, the separation of uh, this common CPU and this specific CPU. When I say this common CPU, this is the GPU and uh, other processors that we have. And as Yop said in this talk before, we have the problem of side channel. So this is still not well understood. Uh, we still have seen like several academic uh, papers appearing about like side channel attacks on Kyber and Delifion. And this is just one branch, which is Kyber and Delifion. Uh, there is some from um, Falcon because well, floating point arithmetic, it's hard to implement in secure way. And net, we don't have like a lot of work on the other ones, on the other three ones, like classic McAllis, HQC, and bike. So this is still like how we are going to side channel protect this. And with the new cow of signatures, okay, we have some common thing, which is the lattice, we have code base signatures, but then we have the new branch now, which is the MPC in the head, which we still don't know how to do side channel protections. So this is like increasing in the size of uh, hardware. This is quite problematic um, because no one wants to have their key uh, exposed. So on the good side, because I was like, hey, that's just like problems, right? On the good side is what else we can do? I mean, okay, so from the current um, <clears throat> status, no post-quantum uh, coprocessor, nothing really fancy. Uh, we take like Sphinx, and because it's Sphinx, it's very easy to parallelize. We can do this like, because they have these properties. We could do this in a um, mood thread version, right? I mean, this is, would be nice. There was in the technical session yesterday on the other side, there was someone explaining the LMS in this mood threading, how to do it. So we did this with Sphinx because it's one of the NIST candidates. Um, and we're using a common um, cell phone. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was Android 11. Uh, it was like the speed up was three times compared to a single thread. So we could like speed up. Um, and this is because we can do like this Merkle tree, like several in, in parallel. It's really nice to do it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we did this in a Snapdragon, which is, uh, I think was, it has eight cores. One, it is like the Cortex A77, it's 2.3. And the other one, it's 1.8. We have these two cores and we could run this. Um, and we needed to create several threads to run. You can see the graph that it's like going up and down and then kind of like stabilize. Uh, the reason is there is one time that when to create the threads was more work than the processing that they're doing. So kind of have this, this optimal thread to do it. Um, it was really nice result because we could show, hey, um, from the just general, um, CPU now, we can take advantage of parallelism. So we can also take advantage of the current um, status. So we don't need it like a very specific um, hardware to run it. We already can take advantage of the current one. This is just the software one. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And, but this is like kind of like this generic CPU, right? We have like this four cortex. Uh, A77 and A55 um, to run this. Uh, could you take more advantage uh, from like, for example, uh, vectorization or some stuff that is already in the hardware that you provide? Well, that's the good thing. <laughs> we could do it. So we have um, these DSPs, which is this uh, digital sign of processing. And um, um, they are already like vectorization of uh, functions that uh, like they do like all some operations in parallel, taking advantage of the hardware. This is already in this in the like the common um, processor that we have. Like this was done for um, these hexagon ones are 
I don't know, I think it's since 2018 already in the current CPUs uh, you can use, anyone can use, uh, it's already there. Uh, no, this is not uh, um, propaganda or marketing we're using now, but it's because you're already there for like other operations such as like GPU. Um, <clears throat> so it's have like high level parallelism, which it can be take uh, into account in hash based systems or code based uh, crypto. And this is already what we have uh, that we can take advantage. We don't need like, okay, um, a specific hardware to move. I would say this is still um, okay, working going on. We still needed to, to do some more implementations and check. And remember, this is all what we have. So there is no side channel protection. There is no specific hardware. Um, we still needed the security and integrity on this. So this is why we needed this specific hardware. Um, however, there was like some good news. We can already do some small operations that it doesn't require. Um, and then we go to our conclusion. Uh, we wanted to kind of like stress out that all the PQC computation needs a high performance CPU to do it. Um, that's like high performance when I say this, it's like a core processor unique to run uh, PQC um, because we need like this security, we need this side channel protections, we need like other operations since it's not the mod operations, we still have like other specifics from lattice, hash, and probably code. Um, yeah, that's one, the wide range of, of choices of designs. We also have this problem, uh, how we are going to do this, because we need more RAM, we need more memory, we need more area in the chip, we need more, everything more now, uh, which make hard to select the best solution. We have several possibilities how you do, we can do this trade off, okay, so I pay more operations, but I save size, but this is going to slow down the, 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 the microprocessor, um, or do you use like more memory, or do you use more processor? So there is a lot of trade offs that we needed to design. We still needed to check how to do the best side channel protection. This increases uh, operation, this is increases uh, a lot of problems. Um, <clears throat> so you want to ensure this security on the key materials against software and physical attacks. So I'm very happy that uh, Yope gave this nice review about side channels, so I don't need it to stress out. Um, but we still like, this is of course one of our main concerns, it's security and well, to ensure like also the transition, now it's a little bit of the advertisement, um, we submit one, well, we are part of one of the new uh, signatures that we send. Um, I know that it's not going to be selected, but uh, I think it's going to be nice <laughs> to send. Um, the reason is because we have like big keys, um, but it's really nice uh, because we have the smallest um, signatures. Um, <coughs> And I would say that uh, this concludes. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Gustavo. So we already have one question uh, from an online uh, participant. Are there any requirements around compliance and certification testing? Yes, that's the short answer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, there is. Uh, we needed to comply and like, okay. First reason it's the interoperability. Uh, between the systems. Uh, the second one is the like we needed to um, pass some certifications to show uh, that we are secure. So we still don't know how this is going to proper work, but there is like compliance in several aspects of the chip. 
Yeah, I also have a question myself, right? In the beginning of your talk, you said, oh, we might need all this new hardware. But in the end of the presentation, you sort of showed, yeah, we can use all the things that we have. So uh, is that the plan for Qualcomm? Like uh, we are going to implement on the things on that we have, or are there still hardware changes in the pipeline for future products? There is a lot of hardware changes. Um, the good thing is we can use the knowledge of like how you do this uh, vectorization for HVX, for example. But one of the problems is we still needed the security, so we needed to, to build this side channel protection. Uh, the current ones we can use, like anyone, I mean, when I say like the beginning was this um, high privilege uh, thing, uh, this high privilege has its own hardware to run because needed mm -hmm. to be secure. Uh, the other parts that we are using, like for this to show, hey, we can reuse this that already exists, they are like common executed. So there is other operations executing at the same time, which might uh, expose some cryptographic operation that's supposed to be um, um, secret. And this is one of the problems. That's why we are have like, okay, maybe we reuse what we have as a knowledge to, um, hey, how we do this vectorization, but it's going to be specific hardware. Okay. And does it mean in particular, like for NXP, that uh, especially you're looking at Kyber to, uh, as a, a Ketchak to uh, offload? Yes. <laughs> we also are looking to the Ketchak, how to offload. We are also looking to take um, Ketchak, how to proper secure um, implemented in a side channel protection way. Um, there is still, yeah, there is still a lot of work to do it on the ensuring security. Okay, so I have one online question uh, coming in. Do Apple products use your new CPUs or they are developing their own stuff? Sorry? Apple. Apple. They use Ooh. Um, I believe that for security, they are using their own products. Okay. I know that they have their own team. Uh, so they are not using our products in the terms of security. Um, I would say that our biggest customer is Samsung. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so just to clarify, in terms of the commercialization of PQC chips, do you foresee completely new hardware coming out or are there going to be interim steps to upgrade existing um, existing hardware? So for the hardware, we are going to need it to have new. But of course, as a security matter, we are going to have like a hybrid solution, which is like reusing what we already have, uh, updating the firmware to have like, hey, now this has this uh, post-quantum package mm -hmm. uh, for signatures and thing. But uh, yeah, as um, this is one of the problem for supply chain, uh, which is like, hey, we, I mean, unfortunately, we cannot recall the, 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 the products that we already have the, the hardware and change it one by one. Uh, we really needed to, hey, now this new one has this hybrid solution, has some coprocessor, and as soon as we have like a definite, definitive or more mature uh, chip, then it's going to be the, no, the new ones deployed. Thank you. Any other question? No, then uh, let's thank uh, Gustavo again. Thank you. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.